Glenn McDonald is a professor at the Department of Geography at UCLA. His research interests include climate and environmental change, and he is in Thousand Oaks in Ventura County. So, uh, Glenn, California has always had variable weather, but we are the extremes that we're currently seeing becoming a new normal, do you think? Well, first of all, thanks for having me on the show, Andrew. And uh, yes, I'm sitting here in Ventura County experiencing all this uh, as we speak. I, California has had a lot of extremes. And to attribute any one of these, you know, landslide events or very, very severe uh, uh, fire season to a particular small event and say, well, this is climate change, for example, that would be wrong. What is happening, though? is climate change by the warming temperatures that we've been experiencing. We've been experiencing that year after year now. They are exacerbating this contrast between our very dry summers and our wet winters and are essentially priming the pump for big fires and then followed by these landslide events. The new normal, it's sort of like the normal that we had in the past, variability, but on steroids. And so what do you think this could mean for the future? Are we just going to see more terrible events like this? Well, um, California has had a long history of very large fires and then of, of mudslides, and sometimes uh, associated with burned areas and sometimes not. It's, it's, the, it's the, uh, the nature of our climate here. We have a dry summer period with absolutely no rain, it extends from the late spring into the autumn typically, and then we get we can get very, very large rainstorms. We might get all of our rain in maybe six events and that's it. So you can imagine the intensity. That sets the stage where you're gonna have um, you, you know, natural hazards from, from landslides. The very long dry summer, that sets the stage where you have high fuels and that will then produce the fires. That's just the way it is. But by turning up the volume, by having increasingly warmer temperatures and greater evaporation during the summer, then we basically uh, increase the, the nature of those hazards. You know, as we're talking to you, Glenn, I just want to alert to our viewers that we're looking at live images. These are just incredible of just this stream, this, this heavy flow of muddy water going down what looks like was a street. You can see houses all around. I'm not exactly sure where this is exactly, but it's near to where you are. This is all in uh, Southern California, and it's just just quite the scene to see this and to see, um, you know, we've seen some scenes earlier of just how uh, devastating uh, these mudslides can be. In this particular area, it doesn't look that bad, but it's certainly uh, incredible just to watch all of this. So you predicted the extreme fires uh, last year, Glenn. What are the challenges in making these forecasts? Well, um, I suppose they're twofold. One way is if you're looking a year out, you can get some idea, you know, that, that you might have an extreme fire season. And, and you're right. I did, I did speak to, for instance, at Time magazine at the end of the winter and said, well, we're really primed for something bad here. And here's why. When you have a lot of precipitation in the winter, it's very important for California. It, it provides our water resources. 80% of that water goes to agriculture, which feeds North, of Amer North America, essentially, during the winter. So we need the rain. But that also produces lots of fine fuel. Then we come into the spring and we're getting these increasingly early springs and hot summers. That fine fuel, you know, twigs, leaves, grass, it dries out. It gets drier and drier and drier. And that provides fuel for these, these very large fires. You could see that kind of happening as we moved from spring to summer of uh, this past year. The random aspect is when are you going to get those ignition sources and where is those fires going to ignite? Are they going to ignite upwind of a city like Ventura or Santa Rosa and bring the flames into the town? Or are they going to simply burn wildland areas where fire is a natural part? Those are things you can put together a year out. Looking at a longer time frame, looking at climate change models, we see that increasingly hot and longer summers are what's in store for us in the 21st century because of increasing greenhouse gases. That is going to exacerbate the potential for these fires. So we can see that happening. The two big unknowns will be, is this going to be a great winter for precipitation, which will produce those fuels, even though we need the water? And where are those ignition sources going to be? And is there any way to mitigate the damage from extreme weather, or is it too late? Well, 
You know, we've been facing this for a long time. There have been communities which were built right along the 101, for example, the little area of La Conchita, which is highly land landslide prone. Even without fires, they've had landslides there, which, which have basically taken out houses and killed families. Our, our zoning, our regulations, the geotechnical engineering we're doing now for landslides is much more sophisticated than it was 20 years ago, 40 years ago. We've improved our building codes in terms of flammability of materials. But each one of these events, we learn and we have to go back and we have to rethink those rules. And I think we're, we're into a stage of, in a sense, extreme adaptive management. It's going to be necessary to learn these lessons and act on them very, very quickly. I mean, people are literally losing their lives. We have to look at this and say, these landslides were anticipatable. We knew when those hillsides were burnt and cleared of vegetation that they were prone to landslides. We've seen this big storm system coming for at least a week out. So what went wrong? Where, what lessons can we learn in terms of moving people out? And what lessons can we learn about where we build or how we build in the future? I think we need mm -hmm. to take a really hard look right now. Okay, so you, you, you've talked a little bit about lessons that have been learned in the past with weather disasters when it came to uh, building and, 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 and community planning. So what are the lessons here? Well, I think if we take a look at this, first off, the, let's take a look at the Santa Rosa fire. That fire occurred, you know, when it went into the town of Santa Rosa, into a subdivision. These were not scattered ranchlets. These were densely packed single family homes, bungalows mainly. That was five miles from an area which was defined as high fire severity. In a sense, why did we not anticipate that? Will we need to change our building codes even within our su uh, suburban areas to be even more fire resistant than homes are today? The situation with the landslides, everybody saw this coming. You know, in a sense, how was it that the message didn't get out? How was it that people here who have lived with this as a threat for their whole lives, if they've lived in Southern California, how was it that people are still put in, in danger, in harm's way, or in lethal situations. When the landslide's clear, what are we gonna learn about where we can and we cannot rebuild? Are there gonna be places that we simply have to take out of, uh, out of use in terms of housing or uh, other commercial type of development? I think we need to take a hard look at that. Glenn, appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk to us today. Thanks very much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Glenn McDonald is a professor at the Department of Geography at UCLA.